Hello. Today I wanted to talk about how to clean and set the tension on the Class 66 style bobbin cases. Now this is going to be true of a lot of the vintage machines. It may or may not be true of some of the newer machines that use the same type of bobbin case. If you have a machine that's still on warranty, I would strongly recommend that you take your machine in <laughs> to have this done. Uh, a lot of the um, a lot of the dealers really don't like to know that you've been in playing with this stuff, even though really you should be doing this as regular maintenance. Anyways, I guess what I'll do is I'll start first with how to remove the bobbin case. And on these vintage machines, let's see if I can get you a better view. There we go. On these vintage machines, what we do is we lift this guy up, this black piece here, this retaining clip, and then we move him to the right. And I show you that this way because as soon as I get my hands in here, you're not going to be able to see what I'm doing probably. So we're going to take him, lift him up, and we're going to push him there go, out of the way. Now, sometimes you may find that this is easier to do with your throat plate off. And that's perfectly fine if you want to do that. Uh, for, this for this stuff, I typically don't feel like I need to, so I didn't take mine off in this case. Um, for putting it back on, though, I think what we will do is I will show you how to... Uh, I will take this plate off because I'm going to show you one other thing that's kind of important for seating this. One thing you want to notice here is that this seam here looks like just a pencil line. It's not... There's no difference in height. The bobbin case isn't sitting... I don't know if I can do it with this one. The bobbin case isn't sitting, there you go, below uh, the hook race. It's not sitting above it. It's it's very much like tongue and groove wood, actually. The, the race will actually sit right in between here. And the reason that I say that is because I have heard of people putting their bobbin case in and oh, putting their bobbin case in and getting it in crooked, like I've just done. Here we go. And getting it in crooked and then when they push this back over their machine locks up and they can't figure out what's going on so I figured if I address that now maybe it'll alleviate some of the, uh, alleviate some of the problems that people might have after watching the video uh, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take this guy out again push him to the to the right and just lift him out and the reason that we do that is because of this little portion in here this little finger because this this finger actually goes into a particular spot and that's what I'm going to show you when we put it back in so now what I'm going to do is move this machine out of the way. There we go. And this is your bobbin case. So with these cases, uh, they're not as easy to set the tension on as some of the other cases, like what you would find in a class 15 machine uh, where you take the bobbin case out, put your bobbin in it, and then put your, your bobbin case back in with its bobbin. With these ones, these ones are, because if you try to do the same tests, like the drop test where you hold your thread and, and hang the, the bobbin off the end of it, or the bobbin case off the end of it, the bobbin just falls out of these ones. And uh, so obviously you can't test that way. So it was brought to my attention that people had heard about the method to, uh, to do the, the, the tension adjustment on these machines, but weren't really clear on how it worked. And I, I'm pretty sure that where I got this from originally was from the Tools for Self-Reliance website and uh, their website is tfsr.org and if you go to the left hand side of the screen if I recall correctly you can see uh, one of the selections is Sewing Machine Manual and it is an excellent re resource. It has uh, the 15, the 66, so the 99 as well, uh, the 201 and I think one other type of machine on there. Uh, not the long bobbin machines, but the other machines. And they go through basically a rebuild all the way through uh, top to bottom, which is excellent. What uh, some people don't notice is that the bobbin case for uh, a 66 or a 99 is virtually identical to this bobbin case. It's just that it's set to the side. Uh, but when you take it out of the... Out of the machine out of the hook race you will find that it's actually very very similar the the 66 doesn't have this little dish here this is nice actually it helps you take the bobbin out um, sorry about that it helps you take the bobbin out whereas uh, the 66 and the 99 really relies on a, a lever over here 
uh, at least for the newer machines. For the older machines, you basically had to kind of dig your, your bobbin out. Uh, and uh, so it got, they got more friendly as they went along, which is great. So while we're here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you um, how to clean this case as well as how to set the, the tension on it. And what I'm going to do first, actually, is I'm going to show you how to clean it. Um, there are a lot of people uh, who will, uh, and, and some very highly respected people, who will recommend that you just stick a pin in here and kind of pull out any dust. And in probably 80% of the cases, that will work. The problem that I find is that in those 20% of cases, it's because there's a lot of grunge in there and you just can't get it all out. So what I do is I take the case right apart. And I've gone through some of this on some of the other cases on my website. Um, I know I did the, the featherweight bobbin case, which would be the same as a lot of the other cases. That'd be your L-class bobbins, like a lot of the FAF machines have. It would be your, uh, the same as in a lot of the long arms. It'd be the same as an M case, again, same as in the long arms. Uh, it'd be your class 15 cases, which is very similar to uh, a lot of the industrial machine cases. Uh, also your class 15 machines, obviously. But the way that these cases work, they're very, very basic, is you have two screws. And one of these is going to be full tight, and that's this one here, and it's basically a retaining screw. And then you're going to have this screw here. This screw here is always the one closest to where your thread is going to go through to get tension. This screw here is your tension adjustment screw, and this screw shouldn't be tight. If it's tight, it's, all, it's actually an indication of something wrong. This screw I find typically is at about two thirds to three quarters of a turn, sometimes half a turn from fully tight. And uh, that's pretty, pretty standard across the board for most of the ones that I do. That's a good starting point. But I'm going to show you how to um, make sure that tension is right for the thread that you're working with. First off, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take this tension spring off. And the reason for that being is that if you've got some grunge under here, or better still, if you've got some oil under here that's affecting your tension, uh, the pin isn't going to help. So what I do first, because if, if I'm just trying to do some routine maintenance and my tension is actually fairly good, I want to know what, my good, what a good starting point is. So I'm actually going to tighten this first and count my turns. So where I'm at right there is right about a half. So it's about a half a turn to tight. So now I know if I take this screw out, I'm going to grab a, uh, a magnet here. This is another great thing about the vintage machines is we never really have to worry about messing up a computer on these machines. So uh, I put a magnet right on my screwdriver to hopefully help me not lose the screws when I take these out because these are pretty tiny screws. They're really easy to lose. In a lot of cases, we can, uh, we can still order some aftermarket screws, but as with a lot of the other stuff that we're finding in the industry these days, the quality isn't necessarily there. So it's better if you keep your original screws and, and don't break them. Uh, the same is true with the springs. We can still get the tension the springs, but uh, I find that the new ones are very, very brittle and they break very quickly. So you'll get to the point where you're just about at perfect tension and then the spring snaps and you have to start all over again after you order a new spring. And so to avoid that, we just be very gentle with them. So I'm going to take this screw out. And one thing that I do, especially with the little screws, is a screw that hasn't been out recently, I will, it's as much as, uh, it's as much pushing into it as it is turning it left. So if I, t if I push in and I turn, hopefully this screw should loosen without me stripping it or without it breaking. Because that's the other thing that I found is that some of these, especially some of the newer screws, will actually break quite easily. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to let this come down here. In this one. And he came off with the bobbin spring in this case, or the tension spring in this case. There you go. And sometimes they are tight enough that that's, that's what happens. <laughs> um, so I'm going to take these pieces here, and what I would do is uh, take a, a Q tip maybe with a little bit of alcohol on it and clean in here, and then let it dry. And now this machine has been cleaned. Uh, several times over and so I don't worry about it. The other spot where you end up with a lot of lint is actually on this side here and this is just the side that mates up against that bobbin case. So then once that's done and everything's dry and make sure it's dry because we don't want to get any corrosion in there 
then what we do is we take our, I'm going to start with my tension screw. And you notice how easy this is to deal with when I've got a, a magnet on here. That's why I do it. It's, I lost a lot of sanity before I started doing this this way. And I'm going to turn it backwards until I feel it seat. And then I'm going to thread it in. And what I do, oh, that didn't go right. What I do with the tension screw, there we go. No, it still doesn't feel right. What I typically do with the tension screw is turn it about halfway in and then I take my retaining screw and I put my retaining screw in and the reason for that being is that sometimes what happens is these two holes will misalign a little bit and you can probably see that maybe just a little bit uh, here with the tension screw not fully tight the spring has a little bit of room to move around and, oh, there we go and that happens so what I'll do here uh, it also comes a little bit from me trying to avoid hitting the camera while talking to you, but what I will do here, there we go, again, turn it back till I feel it seat. This one I'll do full tight, not so tight that the, that the screw head breaks, but tight enough. And then I'll tighten this guy down all the way. There we go. And then I'll back him off that half turn that I recorded before. And that's going to be pretty similar tension to the way that it was uh, when we started out here. So if I was just trying to clean, that would probably be pretty close to done. Now, in this case, um, if I needed to set the tension, and that's, that's a, there are many reasons to have to set your tension differently. If I was to be sewing with, let's say, an orophil or... Let's, let's even go drastic and say, let's say I was sewing with um, silk thread in my bobbin case. That's typically about a hundred weight thread. And then let's say I'm finished with that work and I decide to go to a King Tut, which is a, somewhere in the 30 to 40 range. My bobbin case is going to need to be set tension wise just because of the fact that the two threads are going to be handled completely different. They need completely different tension. So what I would do is I would pick my chosen thread. I would wind a bobbin. And then in order to test the tension, I'm just going to put this guy up here because he's my other bobbin case. But this is pretty much the same bobbin case here. This one probably came out of a... I bet this came out of a, a machine a little newer than a 401, but it's got the same bobbin case as a 401. What I would do with that, with that bobbin and bobbin case is I would thread a bobbin in the same way that I would normally do and I think I might have that backwards no nope, that's right I would thread my bobbin case in or my bobbin into my bobbin case and put it the same way that it is when we use it now what the difference is here is when we want to test to see if our tension is right whoops there we go is instead of using my regular bobbin that I've wound, I'm actually going to use a bobbin that has a weight attached to it. Now, most people would probably use a fishing weight, and that's great if you have one of those. I didn't have one of those when I started doing this, so what I did was I used what I had. This is actually a bag of kamut berries, wheat berries. And so what I did was I put in an ounce because I had, uh, I have a kitchen scale, and it told me that it was an ounce and including the bag and tied it to my bobbin and then I use that bobbin whoops upside down and I thread my bobbin thread into my bobbin case and I hold it here now what I'm going to say here is that my bobbin tension is actually a little bit too loose and the reason for that being is when I hold it I'm just going to move the camera up a little bit here when I hold my bobbin case just a little bit past there we go that should work when I hold my bobbin case properly threaded just a little bit past straight up and down you'll see that my thread my thread is unspooling very very quickly now the reason that is is that the one ounce is pulling too hard on the thread. 
the one ounce is properly is is a, a properly set bobbin case. So what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to tighten that bobbin case. And we tighten it maybe sorry about that. We tighten it maybe a, an eighth of a turn at a time and then we test again. And what we want it to do is to very very slowly pull out of the out of the bobbin case. I'm going to see if I can back you up a little bit here so you can get a better view of a little bit more. There we go. Because as we get more and more thread wound out, we need you to see more. There we go. Upside down. And I'm actually going to say that there's a chance that this bobbin spring is damaged a little bit. And the reason that I say that is, you can see this right here. There's a really good chance that kink is actually a little bit too big and that the bobbin spring may not give us actually exactly the right tension. It may though. Okay, so as I lift this up, we can still see the thread trying to unspool. So I'm going to tighten again. Again, about an eighth of an inch. or I'm sorry, an eighth of a turn. Okay. So now what we're seeing is it's holding. It's holding without coming out of the case, but you can see it kind of inching around just a little bit as the, as the weight. No, you can't. You can see when, when I hold this up that the weight is not actually pulling the thread out but it may just do a tiny little bit of a movement. If it does that, I call that pretty good. And then what you can do from here is knowing that your bobbin tension is, is set up right, you know that any adjustments now to tension need to be done at, on your top tension. So this is a great thing to have at least one known quantity. It removes a lot of the variables for you and you can go ahead and do, uh, and do very good balanced stitches very easily. So now the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to cover how to put the bobbin case back in. I'm just going to move you back forward again. And I'm going to bring this machine forward. And down. There we are. So now what I do with these machines is sometimes I will take this plate off. If you take the plate off, the thing that kind of makes me a little crazy, which is why I don't do it, is you usually have to take your needle out. I'm sure it's a safety thing. But what this will do, if I can get a little more light, there we go, is it will let you see the finger here. Now this finger under here is what that bobbin case is going to go around. Now on a 411G, uh, as well as a couple of the other ones, a 431G, maybe a few more, there's an extra finger here on the bobbin case that the other bobbin cases don't have. Otherwise, they're pretty close to identical, and certainly the older version of this bobbin case looks pretty much like this one. This little finger here, just ignore it. Pretend it's not here. What we're concerned about is this finger here. And right here, think of this as your fingers doing the peace sign. Your fingers are going to go on either side of that of that finger here. Same thing with your bobbin case. So we're going to tilt it in and we're going to straddle that finger and then we're going to move our bobbin case just a little to the right and wiggle till it goes into place. And I'm actually thinking, there we go. And again, we want to make sure that there is just a, a just visible seam here. We don't want any height difference between the top, I'm sorry, between the bobbin case and the hook because that means it's not seated correctly and you're going to lock the machine up. Then all we do is we grab this guy, pull him into place, put our plate back on, put the needle back in, close the plate, and we're ready to sew. That's it. I hope this helps you guys out. I know this was kind of a long video. I apologize for that, but uh, we did cover a lot of ground. Anyways, if you have any questions, uh, let me know in the comments or on my website. And, uh, Hope you have a good one. Take care.